Right, we're going to um, get going again, and we're going to build on what we've just done. So we just did the Pearson correlation coefficient, or calculated that uh, for this this data set comparing age to weight, and we found a strong correlation that was uh, a strong positive correlation between age and weight that was statistically significant. And um, we also plotted this uh, this straight line through this cloud of data points, so we could see that um, indeed uh, it, the data appeared to follow that linear relationship that we needed to um, see to use the Pearson uh, correlation coefficient. And if I just run that again, so I've got it on my screen. Um, so we saw that the correlation coefficient was 0.93, and we'd report that as an R value. So R equals 0 0.936. And when, when we fitted this straight line, we had this uh, funny value called the R squared value sitting up here, and that equals 0 0.877. Uh, these two things aren't, simp aren't just related because um, they're the same letter of the alphabet, but they are indeed related mathematically. And this thing called, put it, well, th this trend line, this adding a straight line through the data, is called linear regression. And so this is a simple way of doing it for a visual uh, data set. But there's also another menu option that will spit out a bunch of numbers that we can look at. So if under the analyze menu option, this time we go to regression. Regression just means um, fitting some model to our data drawing lines through points of data. And under the regression submenu, we want to do a linear regression. So we can click on that. And then we get the uh, linear regression toolbox pop up. And the dependent, it, it, it expresses these um, variables in terms of dependent and independent. Now, we probably haven't determined um, whether our variable is truly dependent on other factors or if in fact it's a driving um, force. We haven't determined causality, but this is just terminology um, that is used especially in regression analysis. So dependent is typically the thing that you're interested in, the parameter that you're measuring, and you're interested in whether it varies uh, if you vary some other factor. So the, the independent variable is often the, the, the factor that you have control over. Well, in this case, um, the dependent, the thing that we're measuring is weight. And the independent is age. Now, we may not have control directly over age, but equally, age is this thing that marches on um, and therefore is independent of the other things. If we change our weight, I would propose to you that it's unlikely we could control our age. Um, so if you lose weight, you don't get younger, unless someone can prove uh, the contrary. So we're going to put into the dependent box, I'm going to put weight, that's weight in kilograms, and then into the age into the independent box I'm going to put age. I'm just going to have a look in there, see if uh, that all looks about right. So that is sufficient for us to build a very simple linear model. That's just um, fancy statistics talk for saying I'm going to draw a straight line through these data points. Um, I used to think, um, I come from a background where we would develop physical 
computer models of complex um, situations. So I was interested, I still am interested in how light propagates through very complicated materials such as um, biological tissue. And so I think of uh, computer models as these really complicated things that take into account lots of physical um, factors. Uh, and then you start reading literature in the biomedical sciences that talk about developing a model. And often it just means, developing a model just means we drew a straight line through some data points and that's our model. Um, so it, it's not necessarily a complex thing. So we're gonna draw a straight line using linear regression. And to do that, we're gonna press OK. Now it's not gonna plot it for us, but we're gonna see some terminology that should hopefully be familiar. So one of the things uh, that we see here um, is an R value. That R value is the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. So the linear regression actually uses that value to compute the straight line. So when we do a linear regression, we for free get the Pearson correlation coefficient out. So we can immediately see there that there is a strong um, correlation. The next value is R square. Remarkably, that is exactly what it, it says it is. It is R multiplied by R. So 0 0.936 multiplied by 0 0.936 equals 0 0.88 or 0 0.877. So I always uh, round to the second decimal place. This is commonly referred to um, as the percentage or the, the proportion to which the model explains the data. So you could write that 88% of the data is explained by this linear model or 88% of the variation in the data. So what that means is most of the variation that we see so when we plotted it, we see the numbers vary, but 88% of that is described by a, late, uh, a straight line that goes straight through the data. So R square is the proportion, um, or the, ex uh, the proportion to which this model explains the data or explains the variation that we see in the data. In this case, it's very high, 88%. So it has a very high um, explanatory ability, or high ability to explain the data. And then we ask ourselves, well, okay, that may be, that, that's, that's interesting, but is it a statistically significant result? Um, can I reject the null hypothesis uh, that there is no, different, what, no difference between um, this straight line and a straight line with zero gradient or no relationship. I'm saying the null hypothesis is that there is no linear relationship between uh, weight and age. And for that, we can look to the um, analysis of variance table. So linear regression, not only does it use the Pearson correlation coefficient, but it also uses analysis of variance which is something that we've also done and have also seen. And we look to this column here. So you see that the first line says regression and the significance of that regression is very small. So we can reject the null hypothesis um, that there is no linear re relationship. So there is a statistically significant linear relationship between age and weight, and not only that, that linear relationship explains 88% of the um, variation that we see, and there is a strong correlation. 
And then, if you want to dig down even deeper, you may or may not remember, uh, this is a, a maths alert warning. So if uh, maths is something you absolutely hate, and I've already done too much maths on this uh, sheet, um, then just brace yourself against some solid object uh, and prepare for the hit. But if you remember um, from many years ago that a straight line on x and y axes is explained by an equation y equals mx plus c may look familiar, although I may have just introduced some very um, confusing terminology. Well, guess what? Those numbers, the ones that we don't know, are M and C, and it turns out that those values here, that one is C, the constant, and that one is M, up in our equation there. So if you really were interested in plotting that line for yourself and using it to find, say you put in um, the age of someone and you wanted to find out their likely weight, then you could actually use those numbers to calculate it yourself. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to actually do any of those calculations or plug these numbers in, but it is useful to know what they mean. So we've got different levels of interpretation that we can go to with those three tables in the um, in the data there. And then in, in this, so if we're interested in these coefficients, so essentially this, um, this one here, the M value, where it says age in years, and it's got unstandardized coefficients B. Oh, let's get this. So this value here, that tells me, so the number of B in this case is 0.656. That means that for every age um, increase of one year, there is a 0.656 kilogram increase in weight. So that's what that tells us. So we can actually interpret that in some way. On average, obviously, there's some variation, which we've already seen. But then we can look to the right-hand side of this table, and we can look at the significance again. So we've got another, two more significance values. What they tell us is the um, statistical significance of those coefficient values. Testing against the null hypothesis that those coefficients are actually zero. So what's the probability that um, the constant value, the constant offset is zero? Well, it's very small. What's the probability that the rate of change of a, um, weight with age is zero? Well, it's very small. So all of this adds up to tell us that there is a um, strong correlation between age and weight that the linear model explains 88% of the variation, so the remaining variation must, is probably either down to some other factor that we have yet to detect, or it's due to just some kind of other random uncertainty. It's an uncertainty and we don't know its origin. Well, we haven't tested for its origin. But in any case, the analysis of variance output has told us that the regression model um, is statistically significant. So there really is a linear relationship here. And then if we actually want to use that to make some um, calculations or some predictions, then we have some extra numbers down in the coefficients box. And it tells us how uh, the probability that those coefficients are non-zero. Or sorry, the co probability that those coefficients are zero. And they're it's a very small probability. Therefore, um, we can be confident in these, um, or more confident in these numbers. 
Now, we might not grasp every aspect of that, but there's quite a lot of information there, and it does build on things that we've already seen. Um, So let's just uh, highlight that on the slide. So that, that one is telling us strong correlation. That one is telling us that model explains 88% of variation. That one tells us to reject a null hypothesis that there is no, carry on, or is it no? I'm going to say linear relationship between weight and age. And these ones allow us to compute, given uh, an age, they allow us to compute the likely weight. So we can actually write an equation which looks something like um it's right yep so weight equals 54.9 plus 0 0.66 times age And that tells us non-zero coefficients. Yeah. Not quite right on there. So in this um, model, we've just looked at one factor. We've looked at age. How does age affect weight? So when I say factor, I mean one thing, one variable. But of course, there could be multiple factors that affect weight. We've only tested or measured one of them. Although in our previous experiment, we also looked at rank, and we considered how rank might affect um, might affect weight and we said well this is very weak uh, the correlation there but it's also, also statistically significant so it, it does influence it in some way and what we could do is try to incorporate that in somehow to our model um, I'm not going to go into exactly how, how to justify uh, this because rank we've already said is an ordinal um, categorical variable but essentially we could decide that we're going to use that coding and in incorporate that coding into what is known as a multiple linear regression and so the thing to note here is not the technicalities of whether I can incorporate a coded ordinal variable and if that sentence means nothing just ignore it what we're interested in is the fact that we can use this idea of drawing straight lines through data to incorporate multiple factors in to explain um, a phenomena that we see. So here we've said we're seeing variations in weight and it looks like um, age explains 88% of that variation. 
can I improve on that? Can I improve my R squared value? Can I improve the percentage of explanation of the data, of the variation in the data by incorporating other factors? And to do that, we might go to something like multiple linear regression. And um, so in this case, uh, for the um, sake of example, we're just going to dip into SPSS one last time and add in um, rank to our linear model. So we're going to go down, analyze regression linear again. So it's the same place we were last time. But in our independence, we're now going to add another independent variable. And in this case, it's rank. And just bear in mind that it's it's not using um, it's using the coding of rank, um, which can be done, but it's just a slightly technical um, aspect. But the point to note is we're now trying to explain the variation in our data by incorporating in more um, more knowledge that we have. So if you press OK, we now get a new model that comes up. And if you look at the coefficients box, you'll see that we have a coefficient for age in years, but also a coefficient for rank. And there's a few things that we can do to, to look at this. Well, firstly, let's just look and see, has incorporating rank into our model improved how well we explain the variation in the data? Yes, no. No. It's still at this, um, oh look, it's Jodie's birthday, isn't that nice? Um, it's still at about 88%. So actually, we've brought rank in to our, our model, and it just doesn't improve how well we can predict things, or it doesn't improve our explanation of the data. We could have guessed that from uh, the earlier correlation coefficient, but it's quite useful to know so we might exclude it. It doesn't seem to be an important factor in explaining why weight varies amongst our military. Um, the other thing that we can look at is we can say, OK, well, it, I, I'm going to bear that in mind. But let's just look at the coefficients. So firstly, that coefficient is 0 0.128 compared to 0.65 for age in years. So the rank coefficient is smaller than the age coefficient. Now, if you remember, the coefficient is always multiplied by the um, variable. So the coefficient for age is always multiplied by the age, by the age and the coefficient for um, rank will always be multiplied by the rank. In our coding, rank goes, I think, from one to five. So the max, the smallest value is one, the maximum value is five. So we're gonna have five times 0 0.12 as our maximum contribution from rank to the model. Compared to our age in years, which if we were to, just, if we quickly scoot up the page and look at our plot, you can see the age our military personnel are as old as 60. So that's the maximum age. So then you've got uh, two things here. You've got that the coefficient for age is larger, it's 0 0.65, but it's also multiplied by a bigger number, the maximum age. So we can easily see why the contribution from age is so much bigger than the contribution from rank. Or maybe we can't see why, but we can see that it is by analyzing those numbers. And interestingly, although um, the, it's still a statistically significant coefficient, it is in fact less certain than the other ones. So it seems to 
um, not really contribute very much to the model and it's not as certain as to what that coefficient should be anyway. So actually we could leave rank out of the model, it doesn't seem to contribute anything um, for explaining weight varia variations in our sample. And so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, that's as far as we go on um, regression. But you, uh, as we saw in that paper, um, it, the paper mentioned multiple, well, it mentioned regression analysis. And actually, when we look at their results, which we'll do in a second, we'll see that it's actually a multiple linear regression that they used. And it is helpful to at least know um, what that means. Well, at least I think it's helpful. So, so what Dr. Bismarck told you before, if you still remember the linear relationship between two variables, you have to be very careful when you when you do your future research or something like that. You'll find, for example, there is a relationship between weight and blood pressure. But you can't say that, uh, for example, Increasing in weight causing uh, hypertension. You can't because this is just uh, a linear relationship. Maybe there are other factors, but you call them, for example, compounding factors. For example, it could be the ethnicity playing role more important than the, the weight itself. So you have to be very careful when you when you explaining any relationship, a uh, linear relationship, you have to say the linear relationship as you can see from the uh, from the example scatter graph that is or person. Yeah, that's a, a very important um, issue that SABA raises. So, having endured that um, uh, practice with SPSS, we're just going to take a brief look at the research paper that we looked at um, when we arrived, and just see if it if what we've done today shed some light on what the that authors of this paper did in their research and also see if it um, gives us any more tools to uh, give any criticism of the paper. So um, I was just looking for a particular part that I now don't seem to be able to find under the results. Oh, here we go. So if you open it up to page 713, that may be if I... And there should, there's a paragraph, the second paragraph starts, chi-square analysis of... Um, okay. This paragraph here. This discussion also came up during the break, and um, Sabra and I have also discussed it since uh, the initial um, thoughts on this. So the first statement that they make in their results section is that chi-square analysis of S-mutans levels in children with and those without dental caries demonstrated a statistically significant positive association with caries. So what they seem to be saying, so, um, 
What up about this? Is they've got a small p value. And uh, so there is a an association between caries and the level of S mutans that was detected. And then they've gone on to explain that a bit more and they say with more individuals with caries in each of the lower medium high categories um, for S mutans. So they've just explained what they see in their results. Now I did I pointed out this uh, this sentence here it says, as noted in previous studies, the level of S mutants was not necessarily indicative of the presence of disease. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems to contradict um, the previous statement. And so, if I were asked to um, give a criticism of this brief paragraph, that's something I'd pick up on. I would also say that I think it's more a discussion point because they've not made it clear what they're trying to say here. It, it may be uh, that other studies have shown, shown this and they may also have decided that based on analysis of their results, they also agree, but they haven't explained it. This isn't the place to explain it. That result, that other people's results have no place in this results section. Um, and so it just serves to make us confused. And so it shouldn't be there, and it appears to contradict what they're showing. They've, they even they do this uh, this thing where they just put table three. So we look at table three, and we're none the wiser. Except we now know that that's a contingency table, and we can explain the frequencies. But to me, it says, okay, well, the lower levels. I look at this. I say you got. Um, more frequently, lower levels of S mutans seem to be associated with no caries and higher levels, as in something actually happening up here in the high level region, seems to be um, associated with caries. And, there's, and, and the chi-square test has told them that there is a difference in the distribution of S mutans between the two uh, between caries and no caries. I suspect what they're getting at is that although it may be raised, so the level of S mutans may be raised in um, individuals with caries, there is also a sizable portion um, who exhibit low or none. That may be what they're saying, but they haven't said that. They should be saying that in discussion. They shouldn't be saying it in their results section. Um, and it's not clear. So we can feel free to criticise if we think that that's valid. There's another thing um, which uh, was raised is they talk about a positive association. Um, and talking to Saba uh, just now, you can get directional associations from um, a chi-square test. And in the past, I've done this just by uh, computing things by hand and, and looking at the looking at the numbers. Uh, and I was just taught how to get those numbers out as a box in SPSS. Nevertheless, um, what they haven't done here, uh, we haven't covered the directionality in a chi-square test, so let's not worry about it too much. But what they haven't done is defined what they mean by a positive association. I would assume a positive meaning positive for disease, but it could be a positive state of affairs, meaning no caries. So they, don't, they haven't defined it, and they need to define what they mean by a positive association for us to be able to understand and interpret their results. Um, and, and similarly, they, they then talk about when they're talking about the lactobacillus they uh, also are mentioning here a negative association. So if you're going to talk about directionality, uh, you really need to define what you mean um, by it. Except, of course, they could have done a um, Spearman rank correlation here where the directionality is obvious because positive and negative correlations um, 
are well defined for the correlation uh, tests. Yep. Thanks, Emma. So, um, and if you look at the statistical analysis section, you'll also see there's a couple of other things in there that we mentioned at the beginning. So we use regression analysis, or we have now used regression analysis, so we're familiar with this. It's not um, anything particularly special, but it's a useful tool for looking at how multiple factors might influence um, the thing that we're measuring, uh, independent variable. And so those terms, uh, covariates and co confounders, really refer to those other factors. I don't know, Sabah, did you want to define those in any more precise way? Uh, how, how would you like to define co the terms covariates and confounders? So it, it, Okay. 
covariate is something that varies along with something else. <laughs> the two things that vary together or multiple factors that might vary together that might be highly correlated or strongly correlated. I would just say when you see these terms, what we're talking about is multiple factors that influence the thing that we're measuring um, and don't get too hung up on the exact terminology. And so you can use the multiple regression to do that. And that's what these, these individuals did. Um, they've incorporated in multiple factors and said, do they explain um, the, is it they, uh, investigate the main effects of models doesn't even say what they're looking at but does it affect uh, the susceptibility to caries which was what the original question was and they mention in here the correlation of 0.3 we now know that that's probably um, off the top of my head a moderate correlation um, that they're trying to be able to detect and they now know that they need 78 or so uh, individuals in their sample to achieve 80% um, power of that correlation. So we've now defined some of the terminology uh, present in this paper, which hopefully gives us the ability to read it in a, uh, an informed manner. So now what we've really come to the end, but I just wanted to recap or show you that on these slides, there is a summary of the things we've covered. I think it's quite hard. We've come in five weeks. Um, it's quite a few hours of sitting in this warm computer room, listening to me drone on about a, um, about stormtroopers and star Wars. And, it's useful just to look back and have a think about the things that we've touched on um, over the last five weeks. So I've tried to summarize these things here. We may not have covered these all in depth, but they will have all been mentioned at some point. And so by forming a list, this, uh, amongst other things, provides a, a focal point for perhaps some revision. Um, this tells you what I think I have taught or what the things that I think that I've talks about during the sessions and so I'm not going to go through it um, each page you'll see there's several pages there but you'll get the idea that there's um, I've got the names of these uh, of a number of different tests or different um, types of analyses and then I have uh, their purpose and some limitation this won't this isn't exhaustive but it will point you in the right direction and hopefully um, provide you with the the right tools to go on and do further um, study and revision of, of, of all of these subjects so we go I think the only thing I may not have on here is regression so you'll see that I haven't put regression on the table but hopefully, because that was in today's session, you should be aware that you've covered it. Unless you fell asleep for the last uh, hour. I'm not ruling out, but I've told you now. We also covered regression. And on that note, I'm going to draw to a close.